Hi, this is Libby. And this is Roberta. And this is Art Blog Radio. Today we're with Erin Riley. Erin Riley is a weaver, a young artist, a conceptual weaver who's telling stories that are like the morality tales told by Chaucer in the Middle Ages. In Riley's woven tapestries, cars crash when drunks drive them off the road. Young ladies, also drunk, pass out on bathroom floors, and young women in their underwear risk unspoken dangers. Riley, who graduated with an MFA from Tyler School of Art in 2009, has shown in several Philadelphia galleries and many galleries around the country. We're talking with Erin at Fleischer Art Memorial, where her exhibit is on view through February 5th. So Erin, your works take no prisoners. This is not hearts and flowers. This is car crashes and drunks. Yeah, a lot of people um, ask me why I'm weaving this image, these images. I feel like these are the images of, of the time. These are what's happening right now. I do kind of feel like I'm bringing things that might be put in the trash can, the trash bin, um, and bringing them out and, you know, weaving what's happening now. Do you think these are trash bin people, or do you think these are trash bin images? You know, everyone has their their life as a young person, and we all do things that we might not be proud of. So I think what's interesting is that nowadays people are putting images online that they can't get back. And... You know, I'm I'm getting rid of their faces, so I'm not I'm not putting them back into these pieces. I'm I'm just using the images as like a a footprint through what I see as you know times that people might regret or events that were not so fun. So it's more about the internet communicating and holding these images for public view. It's about the media in a way. Yeah, it's about sharing. It's about the publishing of images that you can't get back. Um, You know, young people who have uploaded 20 images of a party that they haven't really gone through and that there's one girl in that that group that is indisposed or there's no editing beforehand of where these pictures are uploaded. So that's kind of where I'm interested in. I'm sort of interested in the difference between um, how fast it is to upload something Mm. and how long it takes you to make one of these tapestries. Yeah. How long does it take you? I've been working um, consistently like an hour, an inch vertically. So that's that's just on a good day. So, you know, in eight hours, I can weave eight inches up. Some days it's much slower just because of the images that I'm weaving might have more detail so do you scale these images up that you printed out from the internet kind of like a mural artist would do? Because you're working larger than an uh, eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Right. So I print them all out and then I trace them with clear, clear paper and then I just blow them up on an overhead projector. But you have to make a lot of decisions, it seems to me, in the process of doing this because... The real world is very textured in terms of what it has in it. It has a lot, a lot of detail if you're using a photograph. But you really have reduced things to, um, sometimes they nearly go abstract. Mm -hmm. They are so reduced. Um, For a while I was never including shadows because shadows are just another thing that's even harder to add. And then I've slowly added in shadows. So there's just, you know whatever I'm willing to do at that time, whatever I have the time for. With one of the um, still life pieces in my current show, I felt like the shadows were really important and it helped everything look a little bit more real. So it was a good challenge. This work feels very personal. Mm -hmm. Even though they're not of you, they're not of your friends, they're not of your family, Mm -hmm. but they're they're girls. Mm-hmm. This is not all of the tapestries, but a portion of them. What is it about it that's personal to you? Well, my family has been through um, death and car accidents, and it's me and two other sisters, so it's all girls. So I've been thinking a lot about how 
young women progress and how they um, grow up, what influences their insecurities or how they develop. So every time I look at a young person or a young woman specifically, I am thinking about my sisters thinking about myself and how I was when I was a young woman and the insecurities that I had and you know with my sisters they might have gone down the road of using substances and having those issues whereas I was more inclined to avoid that but there was other things that still affected me all of my work with all of the images they definitely relate to my life and to my sisters lives so even with the guns, there's always a connection to... Yeah, why'd you choose guns? Well, maybe we should stop for okay. a second and say that one of the tapestries is a portrait of a group of, I don't know, are they assault weapons yeah. or some kind of long arms? And, and they're stacked up against a wall, and then there's a pile of loot. I started the loot series. Um, this is loot number four, so I've done... Um, three others, and I was interested in seeing the the objects of an, an arrest. The things that a police officer or an investigator um, lays out, the things that change someone's life or that, you know, totally change their trajectory, their life. Many of my family members have had issues with arrests and drugs once you're arrested your your opportunities are so much different your everything changes so do you sell your work yes i have been <laughs> in philadelphia do you sell your work in philadelphia no. anywhere no okay so tell us where and tell <laughs> us more about that so my work got into new american paintings in 2008 someone i went to undergrad with who was involved in a blog based out of San Francisco, saw my work. He, he put my work on the blog, and then a gallery in San Francisco offered me a solo show. What's the name of the blog, and is it um, still around? It's called My Love For You is a Stampede of Horses. It's still around. The direction has changed. Um, the, the Guerrero Gallery in San Francisco gave me a solo show in 2009, and they have really been supportive about selling my work and getting my work in, solo, in group shows. And I have a solo show there in April, April of 2012. So, Are you working right now to produce things for that? Yeah, I'm actually, I have a studio based in Philadelphia, but I've been doing residencies, so I don't have a place to live right now. How does that work? <laughs> um, like squatting and sleeping in my studio, which is a, not loud, and staying at friends' houses. I'm homeless. I don't have a job. How's that going? It's going fine. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I was really scared to do this, and I, I've always had a job in between residencies, and I've always been a worker. And I've been really trying to be a full-time artist, utilize residencies as opportunities that support artists, really take advantage of the system that's in place to support artists. I've been, I've been really fortunate to be, be getting residencies back-to-back -back so that like, I keep traveling and keep having a place to live. So, so where have you been? What residencies have you had? <clears throat> I've been to Emanuel College, which is in Boston, Massachusetts. And then I went to McDowell Colony in Petersboro, New Hampshire. Yeah, and then I went to McCall Center in North Carolina, in Charlotte, North Carolina, which was a three-month residency. And then I just did Vermont Studio Center, and now I'm headed to Bemis Center for Contemporary Art, which is in Omaha, Nebraska which is really exciting. It's three months again, and it's stipend, and it's huge workspace. So do they have looms there for you? You don't have to bring your loom. You do? Yeah. At the beginning of all this, I had a Honda Accord, and I just realized that I needed to get rid of the Honda Accord and get a pickup truck. So I bought a pickup truck. My loom fits in the back of the pickup truck, so I truck 
I drive to all my residencies with my loom. So you dye your own yarn. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. I dye out of a crock pot. It's the largest crock pot on the market. It's a turkey crock pot. So it fits a lot of yarn, but it's not the greatest system. But it's really the only system that's not super dangerous. What, what sort of dangers are there? Well, there's um, fumes, and then there's dangers of fire with a stovetop situation. So a crock pot's pretty controlled and still pretty toxic, but I, you know that's fine. So when did you discover that you wanted to be an artist or that you were an artist? Were you in your childhood? and um, In high things? school, I had a great um, art teacher in high school. I think I, I owe him a lot as far as like getting me out of where I came from, um, really helping me go to college. And he was an artist too, so he was just like a great influence. So. And where is home again? I'm from Cape Cod, Massachusetts. I grew up on the Cape. And when you say getting you out of the, sis the situation you were in, what was the mm -hmm. situation? Well, Cape Cod is this, you know, it's a beautiful place to be to be in the summer, and it's but it's a small place, and in the winter it's pretty dead. So, and a lot of, you know, any small town, it's a lot of um, graduate from high school, get pregnant, get married, or don't get married, work a really bad job. And it was just like that cycle that I was seeing with my peers. So I really wanted to get off the Cape. And I did, which um, I was like really determined to do as a young person. I did not want to stay. Do you still have family back there? Is yeah. that where your sisters are? My mom is on the Cape, and then my sisters are um, in Boston or, you know, surrounding areas, Providence. So, yeah. So things are, things are good. I'm glad they got off the Cape, too. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what do you do to relax? I don't really relax. I'm staying with an artist who we're both in this grant kick right now. He keeps coming up to me on my computer and being like, you need to leave the house. You need to get out of here. I like to cook, but also cooking is, you know, in between studio breaks. So I watch trashy TV or something, but I do it while I weave. So what kind of trashy TV? <laughs> <laughs> I like reality TV because it's a very interesting. It's almost like case studying, you know, it's like real psychological in a lot of cases. Like the Jersey Shore kind of reality? No, I can't <laughs> handle that. I can't do it. We've been talking with Erin Riley at Fleischer Art Memorial. Thank you for talking to us. And thank you very much. Art Blog Radio is brought to you by theartblog.org. Thanks to our sponsors, including the Knight Foundation. Also, we want to thank Peter Crimmins, who makes us sound good. He's our editor. And thanks to Eric Biondo for his music. You can download these podcasts at theartblog.org slash radio.